SpaceX is launching another all-private mission, this time to the International Space Station. Known as Axiom Mission 1, or AX-1, this is the first flight to the $150 billion outpost with no government astronauts present. The company Axiom Space has chartered the flight with SpaceX to send four people to the ISS for 10 days. While the mission is dedicated to research and outreach, it's also acting as a proof of concept for future private flights to the outpost as Axiom Space prepares to send its own modules to the space station later this decade. So who are these four people going to the ISS, and what is Axiom Space, and what are the company's goals? I'll answer these questions and more after the intro, but first, if you're enjoying my content, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss another video. The AX-1 mission is scheduled to launch as early as April 6, 2022 from Launch Complex 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Check the description below for any up-to-date launch and mission event times. Four people, one professional Axiom Space astronaut and three spaceflight participants are planning to launch inside Crew Dragon Endeavor atop a Falcon 9 rocket. This will be Endeavor's third flight to space and the fifth use for Falcon 9 Core B-1062. Should everything go as planned, Core B-1062 is expected to land on SpaceX's drone ship, a shortfall Gravitas, located downrange in the Atlantic Ocean, and be prepared for another mission. This will also be the first third flight of a Crew Dragon spacecraft. Once in orbit, the AX-1 mission is expected to take about a day or so to reach the ISS, or it will dock to the space-facing side of the Harmony module. After leak checks, hatches between Endeavour and the ISS will be opened for the crew to go inside to meet and work with the space station's seven-person Expedition 67 crew. That crew currently consists of NASA astronaut and outpost commander Tom Marshburn, NASA astronauts Roger Chari and Kayla Barron, European Space Agency and German astronaut Matthias Maurer, and Russian cosmonauts Oleg Artemyev, Denis Metviev, and Sergei Korsakov. The four non-Russian astronauts also launched to the ISS in a Crew Dragon on NASA's Crew-4 mission. Their ship is named Endurance, and they launched in November of 2021. With Endeavour's docking, its third at the ISS, that spacecraft will have seen all of its sister ships in space at least once, except SpaceX's newest Crew Dragon, Freedom, which is expected to launch several days after the AX-1 mission ends. Overall, the AX-4 crew is expected to remain aboard the ISS for about eight days before undocking and returning to Earth. Re-entry and splashdown off the coast of Florida should come around a day after undocking, depending on orbital mechanics and weather conditions. The exact splashdown location will also be weather dependent. Now, who are these private space travelers? Commanding the AX-1 mission is 63-year-old Michael Lopez Alegria. If you recognize his name, it's because he is a retired NASA astronaut who flew to space four times before this mission. Three were aboard space shuttles between 1995 and 2002, and one was via a Soyuz spacecraft to be part of the space station's Expedition 14 crew between September 2006 and April 2007. In total, he has accumulated nearly 258 days in orbit. However, he is an experienced spacewalker, having been outside a spacecraft 10 times for a career time of nearly 68 hours. He retired from NASA in 2012. In 2017, he joined Axiom Space as Director of Business Development before being selected to command the AX-1 mission. Since he is on Axiom Space's payroll, he did not purchase his seat for this flight. The other three, however, did. Since this is a private mission, the amount they paid has not been officially disclosed but NASA missions appear to cost about $65 million per seat for a five to six month trip to the ISS. The first of these spaceflight participants is Larry Connor. He'll be serving as the mission's pilot. Born in 1950, Connor is an American entrepreneur and is the head of a real estate investing firm called Connor Group, which has $3.5 billion in assets. According to Axiom, he also founded two technology companies and has a nonprofit called the Connor Group Kids and Community Partners, which invests in programs that pull children out of generational poverty. Another of his nonprofits is the Greater Dayton School, which Axiom says is Ohio's first private non religious school exclusively for under resourced students. Connor has won various aerobatic flying competitions and has summited Mount Kilimanjaro and Mount Rainier. With the AX-1 mission, Connor will be the first private pilot to reach the ISS and the first human to reach the deepest depths of the ocean and space within one year. 
In spring of 2021, he descended to the deepest point in the ocean, the Challenger Deep, in the western Pacific Ocean inside the DSV limiting factor. His maximum depth was 10,929 meters. I think that's really neat. And let me know if you think so too by launching this video's like button into orbit. Riding alongside Lopez Alegria and Connor will be two mission specialists, Itan Stebe from Israel and Mark Pathy from Canada. 64-year-old Stebe is an investor and philanthropist. His trip to low Earth orbit will make him only the second Israeli to do so. The first was Ilan Ramon in 2003. He was one of seven killed during the STS-107 Space Shuttle Columbia accident when their spacecraft disintegrated during re-entry just 16 minutes from landing. Stebe, in collaboration with the Ramon Foundation, the Israeli Space Agency, the Ministry of Innovation, Science and Technology, and the Ministry of Education, will fly to the ISS under the Reykia banner and the maxim, There is no dream beyond reach. Reykia is the biblical term that designates the creation of the sky. Finally, Pathy, 52, is an entrepreneur and philanthropist. He is the CEO of Montreal-based Maverick, an investment and financing company focused on innovation and social impact. When he flies, he will become Canada's second private astronaut and the 12th overall to go to space. AX-1 is SpaceX's second non-NASA crewed mission. The first was Inspiration4 in September 2021, in which a billionaire and three ordinary people orbited the Earth for three days before returning. However, unlike Inspiration4, AX-1 is going to a multinational orbiting laboratory. This required the four passengers to undergo additional training specific to the ISS and any equipment they may use while aboard. Throughout the last half of 2021, the four trained extensively at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston to familiarize themselves with the outpost, including safety procedures and how to use the toilet. An interesting note though, according to NASA, if the toilet breaks while one of them is using it, an Expedition 67 crew member is expected to be tasked with fixing it. Well, that will be quite the stinky situation if that actually happens. However, the AX-1 crew won't be just floating around the outpost for fun for eight days. They have a number of science experiments and outreach activities to perform. According to Axiom Space, these include the demonstration of self-assembly technology for satellites and space habitats, a cancer stem cell study, and an air purification demo. The self-assembly demonstration is called a tesserae, or tessellated electromagnetic space structures for the exploration of reconfigurable adaptive environments. The long-term goal is for large tiles to be launched in a stacked configuration. After reaching their destination, they could autonomously swarm together and build habitats or other spacecraft. For the AX-1 mission, smaller prototypes will be used to demonstrate their sensing capabilities and electro-permanent magnets and provide insight into the quality of the bonds between the tiles. The AX-1 crew will also work on a cancer stem cell study. The investigation hopes to use the accelerated aging aspects of the microgravity environment to evaluate early precancer and cancer changes in future tumor organoids. The hope is to be able to spot any biomarkers for early detection and further the future of cancer stem cell research on the ISS. A third experiment will involve the use of the Japan Manned Space Systems, or JMAS, photocatalyst air purification device to verify the performance of an improved filter. The filter employs the use of photocatalytic LEDs to safely convert volatile compounds in the air into carbon dioxide and water. According to Axiom Space, with an improved air filter, the JMAS device may be able to better clean the air on the ISS and remove cabin odor. There are, of course, more experiments that will be done by the crew, many of which will be in partnership with the Mayo Clinic, the Cleveland Clinic, the Montreal Children's Hospital, and more. As alluded to before, the AX-1 mission is the first of many planned by Axiom Space, which was founded in 2016 by former NASA ISS program manager Michael Suffordini, along with Cam Gafferin. Axiom Space is a company with the goal of operating its own space station, offering a destination for tourists as well as government-funded commercial astronauts engaging in space-based research, in-space manufacturing, and space exploration. As of right now, it has four missions planned through 2024, each increasing in duration and scope. The AX-2 mission is currently targeting the first part of 2023 to send four people to the ISS for about 10 days. Its mission commander will be former NASA astronaut Peggy Whitson, who has accrued 665 days in space over five missions. She is NASA's most experienced space flyer to date. While not confirmed for what mission, the winner of a reality TV show of Discovery, who wants to be an astronaut, is expected to join a future Axiom crew. Axiom has much bigger ambitions, however. It plans to build its own commercial section on the ISS, which is expected to be detached to form its own free-flying outpost before the ISS is deorbited at the end of its life. 
In 2020, NASA awarded Axiom a contract to launch at least one module to the ISS as part of the space agency's efforts to commercialize low Earth orbit destinations. The first hub module is slated to launch as early as 2024, with plans for several more modules and a giant window to be orbited throughout the latter part of the 2020s. The company is even contracted by UK-based space entertainment enterprises to build an inflatable movie and entertainment module. In addition to new modules, the Axiom orbital segment would also increase the number of docking ports on the US side of the station, which currently only has two. In a recent press conference, Axiom said it plans more missions to its section of the ISS to allow for a multitude of commercial activities. It even hopes to have a permanent crew member aboard the outpost at some point, in preparation for when it eventually becomes a free-flying station. The International Space Station is becoming a bigger hub for commercial low-Earth orbit space activity. However, at some point this multi-decade old outpost will be too dangerous and costly to operate and will need to be deorbited. If nothing replaces its capabilities, this fledgling market could wither and die before it has a chance to mature. But NASA has a plan for that. I did a whole video about the multiple commercial space stations NASA is helping to fund, including Axiom's. You can see it right here. NASA is doing this to ensure there is no destination gap in low Earth orbit for commercial and government research when the ISS is gone. This will also have a side benefit of freeing up billions of dollars for the agency's deep space human exploration ambitions with the Artemis program. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, at Astra.